Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I'll be showing you how to replace a door switch on a Whirlpool or Kenmore dryer. A door switch is a safety switch that shuts off the dryer once you open the door. If this switch is broken, the dryer might not spin at all, or, like in my case, my dryer is a bit of a special case because... When I open my dryer door, the dryer just keeps running. And that theoretically could be dangerous. If you have like a bunch of towels and bed sheets in there and you stick your hand in there, it could wrap it up and really give you a good thrashing. Of course, if an adult did that, they're probably gonna be okay. But if my four year old son sticks his hand in there, that could end bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that door switch and show you how to do it while I'm at it. First things first, before taking anything apart, you wanna make sure that the power is off. Next, we're gonna take out the screws that are in front of the lint screen. Two Phillips screws. Then you will need a putty knife to release two tabs on the sides of the dryer. And to see where they are, I usually use a flashlight and I look in this crack and you should be able to find those tabs. They might be metal, they might be plastic. In my case, they're black plastic pieces on either side. Then you stick your putty knife towards the top in that crack to depress that tab. And we can take a closer look at that tab after we open the dryer up. You can also use a thin screwdriver instead of a putty knife. As you're pressing in, you pull up. There's that one. And let's do the other side. There's that one. Next, I like to pull the dryer out a little bit. I wouldn't pull it out too much because your dryer vent could get disconnected and in some cases it's a pain in the butt to connect that back up. Next, you can take this whole entire top piece and push it up. I didn't pull my dryer out enough, so this is falling back down. I can just pull it out a little bit more. Ah, uh, that doesn't look very good. What I'm gonna do is just put a little piece of tape on there to make sure that this thing doesn't clamp down on my fingers as I'm working on the door switch. That should be enough. And right over here in the right top corner, we have our door switch. And the reason mine kept spinning even after I opened the door is because it probably broke earlier on before I moved into this house and somebody simply jumpered the door switch. This is fine to do temporarily, but generally it's not recommended to leave it like this for the reasons that I mentioned previously. Let's take the zip tie off. This door switch plug has two little tabs that prevent it from being unplugged. So you have to take a small little screwdriver or a knife and just pry that open as you're pulling it out. If you're interested in how they jumpered this door switch, all they did is wire nut together two of these wires, the white and the blue. They wire nutted those two wires together. And then the orange is just capped. Here is the old switch compared to the new one. There's the part number of it. I got this off of Amazon after getting a part number from repairclinic.com. The tab in the door switch is angled towards you and it goes into this slot right over here. And whoever jumpered this thing did me a misfavor and did not leave the screws. So I looked on repairclinic.com for the screws and they were over 20 bucks just for two screws. So all I did is waited for this door switch to arrive from Amazon. Then I went to Ace Hardware and picked out some screws that will go in here. And just to make sure that I don't have to make a return trip, I got two different sets, one shorter than the other. I'm not exactly sure how long it needs to be. So let's go ahead and plug the plug in until it snaps. And screw our new door switch into place. Guys, just a brief video interruption. As I was doing this, my little peace sign statue fell off the shelf up on top and one of the fingers broke off and now only one finger remains. I'm gonna go ahead and try the short screws first. 
I'll just put that in halfway and then put the second one in first before I tighten the first one. And I'll be finishing them off by hand just so that I don't over tighten it. I thought the dryer cabinet would have little divots for the screw heads, but it doesn't. So it sticks out a little bit. It's no big deal, the door will still close, but if you're gonna be buying screws like this for some reason, if you don't have your old screws, then I would suggest getting the screw head to be a little bit thinner up on top, so it's not as wide or thick. And all done. I won't be putting in another zip tie because now it's plugged in. And as you can see, this is as far as it can go. And that's pretty far away from the drum, so no need for any zip ties. And if you're still watching all the way until now, let me show you a little bonus trick. I fixed many, many, many of these dryers and I learned a little trick. You actually don't need a putty knife to release those tabs. All you need is your knee. So place your knee in front of the tab and then grab the dryer from the back and pull it towards yourself as you're lifting it from the front. So check this out. Isn't that cool? And don't forget to put the lint screen screws back in. If the holes aren't lining up, then try pressing on the lint screen housing a little bit until they do. And now let's make sure that the fix was effective. Voila, it stops. Perfect. Well guys, and that is all I had for you today. If you have any other tips about this whole dryer repair that I did not mention, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. This here is my stepladder. I never really knew my real ladder. <laughs> if you didn't like the dad joke, I have a little challenge for you. Can you find the panda in all of this mess within 15 seconds. The time starts now.